Today on The Hookup, I'm going to tackle a project that I've been putting off for a really long time because it's overwhelming. I'm going to take down my entire network and rebuild it from the ground up. Over the next few videos, I'm going to tackle different aspects of building the ultimate home network, and I'm going to show you exactly how to set up a powerful, flexible, and secure environment for your smart home. This series will be broken down into three different videos. Hardware selection, installation and migration from your old network, and then advanced functionality. This is part one, hardware selection. Here we go. At any given time, I have between 65 and 70 devices connected to my network, and the vast majority of them are Wi-Fi smart home devices. I've been using Google Wi-Fi for a little over two years, and honestly, it's been really solid. If you want an insanely easy to use product that gives acceptable results, Google Wi-Fi is probably the best answer. But if you're like me and you want complete control over every aspect of your network, Google Wi-Fi just can't provide you with that. You kind of just plug it in and then leave everything in Google's admittedly capable hands. To give you an idea of how hands-off it is, there isn't even a way to log into the router locally. Everything is configured through the cloud-based phone app, which has almost no advanced functionality. In this video, I'm going to focus on equipment selection, and due to countless suggestions from subscribers and commenters, I've decided to go full ubiquity. I contacted Ubiquity about doing this video, and they did send me some equipment that you'll see today, but it hasn't changed my opinion of any of these products. Building a network with Unify equipment is a lot different than going to Best Buy and picking up their most expensive gaming router. A high-end router like the Asus Rapture does a little bit of everything. It's a firewall which controls which traffic is allowed in and out of your network, a router which coordinates the traffic on your network, a four port switch which allows your router to send messages down different paths and a Wi-Fi access point. Unify takes each of these jobs and breaks them out into different pieces of equipment. Very similar if not exactly what you would find in a commercial network deployment. Doing this not only allows for each piece to be more powerful, but it also allows them to be deployed into different areas of your network. Before you buy anything, your first step should always be to diagram out your network and determine exactly which products you'll need. The first piece of equipment we're going to look at are switches. Anywhere that you have multiple wired connections that need to be connected together, you're going to need a switch. For your network, you'll need to decide how many ports you'll need in order to accommodate your physically wired devices in your house, and how many of those ports you need to be power over ethernet. Power over ethernet is a method for providing power to your devices without connecting them to an outlet. And it comes in three common flavors. Passive 24 volt, 802.3AF, and 802.3AT. The CliffsNotes version of the differences is that passive PoE constantly sends voltage through the ethernet cable regardless of what device is connected to the other side. You need to be careful when configuring a port on your switch to be a passive PoE port because if you plug in a non-PoE device to the other end, it will likely destroy it, or at least damage the network port. The other two common standards, 802.3AF and 802.3AT, involve a handshake process between the PoE device and the router. In this handshake, the device requests PoE and determines if the router is going to be able to supply the correct voltage before any current actually travels down the cable. This handshake prevents you from accidentally cooking your devices, and it also removes a step of the configuration process because each device will regulate its own PoE. The Ubiquiti Unify switches support all three of these common PoE types, so unless you're using a device that has pretty extreme power requirements, the Unify switches will be able to deliver whatever flavor of PoE your device needs. As a rule of thumb, you should budget 6 watts of power for each PoE security camera on your network and 5 watts of power for each wireless access point. PoE can also be accomplished without a PoE switch by using a PoE injector. Most Unify wireless access points come with a PoE injector in the box, so if you're okay with plugging in an extra AC adapter and you won't have any other PoE devices on your network, then you can probably skip PoE altogether. When my house was built in 2012, I had the builder pre-wire my house for security cameras. And thankfully, I insisted that he use CAT6 drops for those connections instead of the standard analog security cabling that the installer recommended. I told him where I wanted each camera placed and where I wanted all the drops to be terminated. I assumed, since he knew that I wanted all the security camera pre-wires terminated in one location, that he would know that I wanted all the CAT6 drops terminated at the same place. But you know what they say about assuming. When I came by the house to take pictures of the wiring before they put up drywall, I discovered that my security camera pre-wires were terminated in the correct location, but the rest of my CAT6 was terminated in the garage. 
Normally, I would have insisted that these drops be fixed, but it happened to also be the day that my wife went into labor, so I had some other things on my mind. Moral of the story, I know that in my network, I'm going to need two switches. One for the security camera drop, and one for the rest of the Ethernet ports in my house. For my main switch, I opted for a Ubiquiti Unify US16 150 watts because I know that I want to change my nine analog cameras over to PoE IP cameras. A second, smaller switch, a Unify US860 watt, will connect to my other Ethernet drops and distribute the network out to the wireless access points. Both of the switches that I selected have power over Ethernet, but the US16 150 watt has PoE on every port, whereas the US860 watt only has PoE over the last four ports. And both of them are going to come in well under their maximum power rating for connected devices, so I'm not worried about that. Once you've determined how all the wired devices will connect, you're going to need to decide which wireless access points you're going to use. In my Google Wi-Fi setup, I had three different access points. So to do a fair comparison, I also wanted three access points in my Unify system. There are many different options for Unify access points, but three of them are much more common than the rest. And the biggest difference is varying levels of a technology called multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO, which is part of the 802.11 AC standard. MIMO comes in two different types. There's single user MIMO, or SU MIMO, and multi user MIMO, or MU MIMO. And to understand the difference, you need to know a little bit about how Wi Fi communication works. In a normal Wi Fi connection, only one device can communicate with the access point at a time, so all the other devices have to wait in line. Imagine a queue of people at City Hall waiting to apply for different permits. But there's only one clerk. This means that every person has to wait in the queue in order to communicate with that one clerk. Thankfully, the clerk is really fast, but since each permit application process takes some minimum amount of time, the more people that are in line, the longer it will take for each person to get what they need. SU MIMO is like adding a second clerk to the equation, but there's still only a single queue. If a single person needs more than one permit, they will ask each clerk to fill out one permit until all of them are finished. Theoretically, this doubles the speed of the queue. Unfortunately, if the person only needs one permit, they still hold the first position in line and they occupy both clerks, even though one clerk will be doing all the work for that single permit. Hiring more and more clerks is nice if you have a bunch of people with multiple permits, but if each person only has one, then it won't actually increase the speed at all. In MU MIMO, or multiple user MIMO, some devices can allow another device to use the unoccupied clerks. Which sounds like a huge deal, and a must-have technology, but the problem is that MU MIMO only applies to the 5 GHz band, and the devices that will be sharing their spots in line have to both be MU MIMO compatible. And that's certainly an awesome technology, but it has a very limited use in smart homes, since most of the smart home devices that we use connect on the 2.4 GHz band. Still, MIMO will speed up your network because it will allow those devices that are transmitting a lot of data to do it very quickly. Here's how MIMO is implemented in the three most popular Unify wireless access points. The cheapest option is the Unify UAP AC Lite, which will run you about $80 on Amazon. The AP Lite has two lanes available for 2.4 GHz MIMO and two lanes for the 5 GHz SU MIMO. This gives it a maximum theoretical speed of 300 megabits per second on the 2.4 GHz network and 867 megabits per second on the 5 GHz network. The second and most popular option is the UAP AC Pro, which you can pick up on Amazon for about $134. The UAP AC Pro has three lanes available for 2.4 GHz MIMO and three lanes for 5 GHz SU MIMO. This gives it a maximum theoretical speed of 450 megabits per second on the 2.4 GHz network and 1300 megabits per second on the 5 GHz network. Now the third and newest option is the UAP Nano HD, which costs $158. And it has two lanes available for the 2.4 GHz MIMO and four lanes of that MU MIMO or multi user MIMO on the 5 GHz band. This means it's going to perform the exact same as the AC Lite for 2.4 GHz traffic at 300 megabits per second, but it's going to have an unmatched maximum speed of 1733 megabits per second on the 5 GHz channel. That's assuming, of course, that all the devices that are connected to 5 GHz are MU MIMO compatible. All of these access points can be powered by 802.3. AF or ATPOE, and they come with injectors if you don't have a PoE switch. 
And since the idea of this video series was to build the ultimate smart home network, and at the suggestion of Ubiquity, I decided to go with the Nano HD for my indoor access points and the UAP AC Pro for my outdoor access point. The UAP AC Pro is actually the only one that's rated for outdoor use, so it was a pretty simple decision. I firmly believe, however, that for smart home usage, the UAP AC Lite will give you a very similar performance to the AC Pro or Nano, since the vast majority of smart devices are going to only utilize the 2.4 GHz band, and you'll save quite a bit of money going with the Lite. So now that you've got a plan for how your devices will connect to your network, you're going to need to decide which router you're going to use to coordinate all that traffic. A popular choice for many smart home enthusiasts is the Ubiquiti Edge Max Router Series. The Edge Router Lite is a very powerful and capable router, but it isn't technically in the Unify family of products, so it won't interface directly with the Unify controller software. I'm not opposed to lengthy configurations, but I am a sucker for products that work well together. And for that reason alone, I opted to go for the Unify Security Gateway over the Edge Router. You'd save about $10 by getting an Edge Router Lite, but for me, the integration into the Unify controller was well worth the extra $10. Speaking of the Unify controller, one of the products that I probably wouldn't have purchased myself if Ubiquiti hadn't provided it for me was the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. Unify networks require the installation of controller software that handles all the settings, configuration, and monitoring of the network. These controllers can be standalone devices like the Cloud Key or software that can be installed on hardware like a Raspberry Pi or even on your Mac or PC. In fact, there's even a Unify controller add-on for HASS.io, so you've got lots of options. The one aspect of the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus that isn't replicated by any of these other controllers is the integration of a relatively new Unify product called Unify Protect. This software is Ubiquiti's integrated NVR. The Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus comes with a one terabyte hard drive for recording video for all the Unify compatible security cameras. I'll be testing out those cameras against other popular PoE camera brands in an upcoming video, so make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in that. So now you've got your hardware all planned out, and it's time to address the elephant in the room. Price. The system as I've configured it costs $1,140, which is maybe acceptable if you've set out to build the ultimate smart home network, but it's a lot more than the $300 that you'd spend for three Google Wi-Fi access points and a cheap eight port switch. So what are you getting for all that increase in cost? First, the Unify system that I selected has 20 power over Ethernet ports available for security cameras and other PoE devices. Second, the theoretical maximum speed is going to be greater with the access points that I've chosen. And third, and most importantly, the Unify system has a tremendous amount of advanced control options. If you're never going to touch any of these options, I'd probably recommend going with the Google Wi-Fi system. It's plug and play and Google handles all the things like firmware updates and security patches, literally without even telling you about them. But if you want to take control of your network and dive into things like customized local DNS, VLANs, and advanced traffic monitoring, you're going to want to go with the Unify system. If you're feeling discouraged by the price of my system, don't. A very capable Unify system can be built under $500 by combining a US 860 watt, three AP lights, and a USG. In my next video, I'm going to cover the initial setup of the Unify system and how to make the transition from your old network to your new one as painless as possible. In the third installment in the series, I'm going to walk you through all the advanced features that I mentioned and how to set them up to make the most functional and secure IoT network possible. If you're interested in purchasing any of the equipment that I talked about in this video, I've got Amazon affiliate links down in the description. Buying from those links doesn't cost you anything extra, but I do get a small percentage of the profit. If you've got a question or I got something wrong, make sure to leave a comment below. Thank you to all of my wonderful patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.